Hey everyone, this is Ricky Bell with Victaulic VDC. I'm a programmer for Victaulic Tools for Revit. So I want to talk today about fabrication spooling in Revit with Victaulic Tools for Revit and some of the advancements we've made to make it even faster for you. So the first thing that we're going to need is a model. I have an example model up here. Uh, we're also going to need some sort of view within this model that we can see which elements have been assigned to an assembly and which elements have yet to be assigned to assemblies. Within our project template, we have a view called spooling view, and you'll find it under the coordination 3D views section. Uh, but you can also make your own spooling view, and I've done this before in different videos where you can take uh, a view that you have existing. Maybe I'll take the 3D view and I will duplicate this view. Now I'll just rename the view to something to the effect of spooling. And I just want to apply a view template called Vic Spooling View. Now you can get this view template, like I said, from our uh, project template, or you can get it through the project maintenance button. So check out the YouTube video for project maintenance, and this will make a whole lot more sense to you. So now that we have this spooling view, this 3D representation, black and white, uh, this will tell us whether or not a, an item is in an assembly. Uh, so I'll start on the left-hand side here. I'll make a small selection. Uh, first, I want to bring up the Victaulic Tools for Revit doc. This is the assembly manager. We're going to see in real time as we create assemblies, you'll see them being made. So with my first selection here, I'll click on Create Assembly up on the Modify ribbon or in the Victaulic Tools, Create Assembly, whichever one you prefer. Now with our default settings, system abbreviation followed by a dash is put into the formula bar here. And that's meant so you don't have to keep going in and out of this tool to change your prefix. This variable will change as you go from system to system. I'm going to leave it like this, but really the formula is open-ended. You could put a combination of static text and a combination of uh, variable parameter text in there as well. I'll leave it as chws with a dash, change my number to number one, and using the continuous spooling option, I can now click down the length of the pipe. You can see over on the right-hand side, the assembly manager is picking up my changes, and I'm defining spools. Okay, so we just quickly defined six of them. Now if I went to spool right now in this project that's not necessarily set up for spooling yet, you're going to see some warning messages, and let's navigate through them together. So if I hit the very first one here, and I want to use our default family template, and I click go, it's going to give me this warning message and if I read it, it's telling me there's issues with my assembly and view settings and I should take a look at the view template section under 3D Ortho, Plan, Elevation Top, Left, Right, Front, and Back. So it gives me a lot to think about. If I click OK here, it's going to take me right to the settings to resolve this. Okay, And all of these things that warned me about them being missing are now notated by the missing before each one of these templates that it's looking for. Okay. So to resolve this, we have a tool set up right at the bottom left here called Transfer Standards. And this is going to be a more intelligent way to transfer standards from project to project. Uh, there is a whole video done on this called Project Maintenance, so check that out as well. So the quick thing to do here is just click on Select Dependencies as soon as this pops up. This will go through all of your Victaulic tool settings and compare them to the source project, which will default to the Victaulic project template and it will automatically select them within these lists. Okay, you see the things that I was missing was our ortho without a scale and our section without a scale. And clicking OK here is going to resolve all of my spooling errors. So I could go to town and start spooling right now. Actually, let's do one real quick just to show you the output. And now the sheet will get generated, the views will get generated, the bill of material will get generated. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. A couple things that are on top of each other. Maybe we don't like where things are situated. And uh, maybe some questions. How did these views get created? What told these views to get created? So let's go through our settings. The assembly and view settings is going to be all of the instructions to tell Victaulic Tools where you want your views placed, which views you want placed, and then what options for each view. So starting at the top, there are options here to set up templates once you have all your settings. The instructions at the moment say, I would like a 3D ortho view, and here's the view template I'd like to use. And then heading straight across, there's more settings under this dot, 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 ellipses button that says, 
I would like it to use this viewport, which just has a uh, small text on there. And then I also want the items in there to be tagged. And there's a bunch of options here for how you'd like the tags to be oriented on your sheet. Right now I have it set to fixed length, which means that it's going to place the tags on the view and it's going to guarantee that the length of the tag leader is going to be whatever I specify. So here under Imperial, I have it set as one foot. Okay, there's also options to add continuation tags. Now these continuation tags will then look down the length of your pipe and tell you which spool these continue on. So I'll go ahead and turn on continuation tags with leaders as well. Okay, moving down, I also have a plan view in there that's using a view template called view section, no scale, elevation top, right, left, front and back. And we have them turned on by default because depending on how your pipe is oriented in your project, specific views may not tell the whole story. So we always put a couple views off to the left hand side that we can drag back onto our sheet if necessary, if the ones we've selected don't display properly. There's some new items under here to take note of. Uh, barcodes can be generated and you'll see the barcode sitting in the background right there as well as QR codes. Now these are generated the same exact way as you would set up the name of the spool using a formula. So if I wanted my QR code to read from a particular parameter, these are all the text parameters that are available to read from, and then I can have it be a combination of items. So if I had a URL that I was using for spooling maybe victolic.com slash spooling, and then I wanted the assembly name .html. So now we have a variable URL that can be uh, read by the QR code and to help in fabrication down the line. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click OK on that. Schedules have also changed, where now you can have as many schedules as you'd like, only really limited by the number of schedule templates that you have in your project. So these are all schedule templates that have been created from existing schedules. The static bill of materials still included in here. Uh, based off of this columns button right here, you can control how the static bill of material organizes itself and is viewed on your sheet. By default, we use the piping fabrication spool column template. And then here under advanced, you can control where the static bill of material appears on your sheet and also if you'd like mark numbers to be assigned to the pieces. A brand new feature at the bottom is a default view scale. If you were to create a, an assembly sheet that had views on it and you did not specify the scale within your view template, Revit's going to default to an eighth of an inch. So this is meant to allow your views to have a variable scale after they've been created and without having to disrupt the fact that they have a view template assigned. Okay, so going back to our sheet, if we were unhappy with where things were falling on our sheet and things needed to be adjusted, here's what you can do. We'll take one sheet here and we'll slightly move things around. Okay, and we'll get them to where we want them to be for the most part. You'll see our legend is on top of our QR code, so let's take care of that. Our barcode is on top of some text. And these three views are kind of randomly placed over here. So let's say we've decided that this is how I want every single spool sheet to look from here on out. The way to save these locations would be to go to settings. And as long as the active view is the sheet that you want to use as a source, you can come up to actions and click update layout. So this will save the layout of this particular sheet. Now every sheet that I make from here on out, let's do one more will have a very similar look and feel. Okay, so I see one more issue going on and we have our Fab Notes legend over here, but it has a uh, viewport that is not desirable for a legend. So let's fix that. I'll go to settings, under legends, if I hit the dot 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 button next to that, I'll see that there's no viewport set. So I'm gonna go ahead and do one that does not have a title at all. So now my options here is I could come into this particular viewport and set it manually and just fix it, put one without a title, or I can just redo the spool by highlighting it here and clicking go. There will be a warning that says, hey, there's some elements that will be deleted, but these are just view elements. Not a big deal. I'll click yes. And there we go. We have it created. The fab notes look good. 
There's a continuation tag off the end of this spool. Now with some small adjustments on the annotation tags, this one's pretty much done. So the last thing I want to talk about is how you can take these settings that we've worked on and share them with other Victaulic tools for Revit users. Now within our settings, you'll see at the bottom left, there's an export settings button and an import settings button. This will export a text file that you can email, put on a shared drive, however you deliver it to another Victaulic Tools for Revit user, and they can import it then into their settings and have the same spooling output as you do. There are also ways to share it within the project because there's multiple users in the same project. You can save your Victaulic Tools for Revit settings into the project by clicking on actions and hitting save template to project. Now the next person who opens this project will be able to see these spool templates and utilize them within Victaulic Tools for Revit to give consistency to all of your spool drawings regardless of who's working on it. So that was start to finish of fabrication spooling within Victaulic Tools for Revit. It's a workflow that we use in-house in our VDC and we found great success with it and hopefully you will too. Thanks so much for watching.